in continuing unit four, which is coming back from the weekend, it is due by midnight tonight. So remember, assignments are different than exercises. You need to submit something by the deadline or you get a zero. And if you get a zero, it's like never letting your art director know that you weren't going to meet the deadline in the first place and never getting hired again. So if you get a zero, you cannot resubmit later. But if you submit anything, like any of these things would be qualification for acknowledging the deadline. Your sketch, your inspiration, your refined sketch, your references, your screenshot of in-progress work, right? All of those would show that you know the assignment and that you're acknowledging the deadline. And then you would get, you know, one point out of three, but for not meeting the requirements yet, and but then have the chance to, to work on it and up to a full score by the end of, of our semester. So what's actually required for you to post by midnight tonight to get full credit? You need to post your sketch, which includes at least five different references, right? So we're, we're trying to use five different images, five or more, to build our own original vision. Without the sketch, there's no way for me to understand how this really is your original composition, right? And then we post our final raster composite. And I don't require that you label it in this way, but it's a good idea to check its dimensions, right? Its pixel dimensions or its physical dimensions and its resolution because we want this to be print quality as well. So that's what I'm going to be working on. This is what we've done so far. I'm working on this improved sketch. And what we did last class was the rough cutting, placing, direct adjusting, and refined cutting and blending of asset layers at full resolution. So that's what we have. But you'll notice right from the very first layer, these aren't really refined in how they're cut out yet. But we have tried to adjust their colors. We have worked with their sizing and their placing. And we're going to learn some additional techniques now. So I'm going to, just like when I was doing the rough cutting and placing, I'm going to go back to just my first two layers. My background layer, which is the only one that's still a smart object, because I haven't edited it, I've just sized it. And then the one on top of it. And I did my best to make this match in terms of color, this. But if you remember, it was really yellow before. And so this was as close as I could push those pixels. Whereas this is very, very blue. So sometimes to make things match even better, you have to match them from both sides. So I am going to make the choice here of right clicking on that background layer. I'm not cutting anything away from it, but I'm going to rasterize it. And that makes it so I can directly affect these pixels, have them saved in Photoshop. And that means that I can, again, review direct adjustments with you. So that's how you can, can fix lighting and color. And I do that with three of them. And I use those three over and over again. So you go to your select the layer you want to affect, in this case, this one. And you go to image adjustments. And I start with levels. Levels is the, the brightness contrast, basically. I start with the midtones. And I'm just going to darken those midtones a little bit. So it looks more like a night sky. And you see that it almost intensifies that blue color. But levels does not affect color. It just affects lights and darks. Color is my next step. So I'm going to just push that darker. This is really just for the sky. Then I'm going to go to image adjustments and color balance. This is my favorite one. And I'm going to start with the midtones, and I'm going to push them more towards yellow. And immediately you start to see how that gives this little haze to the sky that starts to work a little bit better with, with the colors of my, my next element. Now, if I push it too far, I'm going to lose a lot of those blues. So I'm just going to push it a little bit. Then I can try these others, like maybe putting a little bit more reds in there just in the midtones. Then I can try shadows and see if I want to affect those. Maybe just a tiny bit. 
and then highlights the sky is atmosphere so it can sometimes be a little different than than how we might treat other layers with coloring it's pretty forgiving all right so if i look at my history which is this top little icon here i can go back before i did levels and color balance and it looked like this so levels made it darker color balance shifted it more into a color range that matches this and then the last one i do is hue saturation now this isn't always needed it might not be needed here but you just shift the hue to one side or the other Ooh, and i kind of like pushing it more towards the cyan like that so that's just a shift of negative two very subtle but it can make this makes big differences like if i wanted a, a green sky a red sky or if i actually wanted to add color to something that was grayscale you can do that by clicking on colorize. But the more you push it, the less variety of color you're going to get. So I keep it really close to the middle because then I get yellows and purples and blues and greens instead of just, you know, all purple, all pink. So I'll maybe put it right, right there. All right, so those are the direct adjustments. And I want this to be a surreal landscape. You know, a surreal desert is kind of my, my idea here. But this glowing top just looks kind of strange still, right? This feels lit very differently than this. So there are other things I can do to help them match. Again, just focusing on my first two layers. It's nice to have your rough cutout because you can see what needs to be erased and what doesn't. And I do need to erase more from this, but I don't need to worry about what gets covered up. So the next step is to cut it out cleanly or to transition it. And so I've shown you already how to use the lasso with a one pixel feather. So I'll show you that again. That's using this lasso tool that we've used. Set your feather to one pixel and it will just slightly soften the edge. I'm zoomed in at 100% right now, so the pixels of my high def monitor are matching the pixels of the image. So I'm seeing it at a one to one pixel resolution right now. If I need more resolution, I can double that by zooming in with Command Plus. And then in the bottom corner, it will say 200% instead of 100%. Now, this kind of thing can happen when that happens. That's not what you want, right? Command Z or go back in your history. That's because I accidentally erased from my background layer, not the layer I want to be erasing from, which is this one. So remember, you can only affect layers when you're select, that you've selected on. Right? So I use my lasso, and then if I zoom in at 200%, you can see what that feathering does. It just kind of softens that edge a little bit. So it's a little bit blurry. I can trim it a little bit more if I need to. That's how I can do a really clean and controlled cutout, especially if I'm using a tablet and have some practice with it, which is a good time to get some practice to start controlling that. Now, because I match the colors though, you see how this is starting to look believable, even though there's all of this stuff unclean. I'm going to turn my sketch off so that that doesn't affect it anymore. So instead of using my lasso and just making it so much like a cutout, these are, this is the advantage of raster compositing. I can erase softly. You know, I don't need to cut out with an X-Acto knife, even if I feather it. So if I really want to blend it slowly, instead of using feather, I'm going to use the eraser tool. And the eraser tool is halfway down the toolbar. It looks like an eraser. You don't want to open it up. You don't want the background eraser. You don't want the magic eraser. You just want the regular eraser tool. But then everything for the eraser is in the settings. This is kind of our introduction to direct mark making, even though we're erasing instead of making pixels. 
So the first setting you want to start with is opacity at 100%. Whenever you start erasing, erase every pixel that's in your tool window. And that's so you don't leave little ghost images behind like you see right here. And then the next thing is the size of your eraser and then the hardness of it. And I want you to use a large size, you know, at least a couple hundred pixels, and then a hardness of zero, which makes it a soft, like airbrushed eraser. And then the first thing you do with your 100% eraser is you get rid of that cut edge when you're blending what's called atmosphere. And you want to get rid of it at 100%. So once you don't see that hard edge anymore on the eraser, ooh, this can get rid of these little uh, ghost remnants that were left from the magic wand tool. Now, the other thing is you want to be using a brush, here we go, that is pressure sized. So soft round pressure size is good. That means the lighter I touch with my tablet, the smaller area is affected. And that saves me a lot of time. So if I want to erase kind of big things like this, I just push hard and it fills that circle. But if I want little tiny things, I just push lightly and I have tighter control. If I'm not on that brush setting, or if I'm just using a mouse instead of my tablet, right, then no matter what, it will always fill the entire circle, and I can end up erasing too much. So that's where a tablet and the pressure sensitivity it gives is really helpful, but it needs to be with a brush that is also set to be pressure sensitive. That's because some brushes can be set to be opacity sensitive, and we're not using that right now. So I get rid of that hard edge first with a 100% soft edged eraser. Then I can go in and I can go to lower opacities. So I'm going to take my opacity down to about 50 and then go in and gently erase away. Right now it's just blending it with the gray background. But if I turn on the layer behind, you'll see well, that will slowly disintegrate that kind of magenta haze and it will blend it at the, that low opacity with the sky behind it. And in some ways, especially for background atmosphere, this is a better technique. I might even go to a lower opacity here. This is a better technique than just cutting out with a lasso. because it blends the colors together as I go. Like I can even take a little bit of the edge off of this mountaintop. So it's like the moonlight is hitting it directly. As long as I don't make it too soft. And that's why I'm at a low opacity. So that, that sky kind of comes from, from behind. Now this is a little bit different. This is still very yellow, that glowing. And I can do different things. I could just internally select it and then do like color balance just on that element, right? But it's gonna look weird because this is from lighting of a different section, right? So I, I don't wanna do that. Instead, I'm going to show you a tool that will help you adjust the levels, the lights and the darks, and in some ways the saturation right on the, the layer itself as a tool. So this is called a tool adjustment, not a direct adjustment. Direct adjustments affect everything in the layer or everything in the selection. Tool adjustments, just like your eraser, adjust whatever the tool is touching. So the tool adjustment we're going to use, these are little, these are the photo retouching tools. They're um, underneath the eraser, three underneath the eraser, so near the bottom half. It looks like a black.